in in two shlokas four different principles mm, wow fantastic that's parashara for you he doesn't waste time <laughs> okay okay mind blowing this is now uh, let me see this is an example chart now i was not supposed to talk about this tri sukha now all right mm -hmm. i was not supposed to talk about it now and what i did was i wanted to show a small chart example of shri krishna this is shri krishna's chart whenever we learn something in our tradition we first start with shri krishna okay uh -huh. okay and so this is the chart that we have been taught in our tradition and we have calculated this this is using jagannath hora all right okay i'm sorry not jagannath hora you could use jagannath hora but this is sri jyoti star all right okay and you'll see that these are the details i'm using for him i have been trying to rectify his birth time you see that mhm mm this is because i've been trying to rectify it down to shasti amsha um, okay. but for him it's not so hard because he they say he has what we call the 16 colors of the moon strong that means okay. the implication of that is his moon is joined his ascendant in 16 divisional charts fantastic okay so there's there's just one divisional chart d45 where you the where i had to put his lagna as cancer so it's still linked to the moon but otherwise it's this is this is the time i'm trying to use for him i may i i, I can't promise this is the final time i might learn something new and i'll change the chart slightly Uh-huh. Now, now let's see his attitude towards relationships. Seventh house Shani, okay. Yes. So that means seeking Brahma. All right. Oh. Either spouse is spiritual or no marriage. Oh. Okay. He's not interested in somebody who is not spiritual. They must have bhakti. Oh. Okay. 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 Now you understand Krishna a little bit better. Okay. Fantastic. Yes. Now seventh lord is either mangal or ketu see in our tradition we say the difference between aries and scorpio is ketu also lord scorpio correct so we make this slight differentiation whenever you you will find actually when you study jyotish more intensely these signs like gemini virgo taurus libra aries scorpio sagittarius pisces capricorn aquarius they are not exactly the same okay Some yes. people some people say Gemini and Virgo are loaded only by Mercury. Then why are they so different? In our tradition yes. we say in addition, in addition. This is Virgo is Rahu's multrikona sign. Ra okay. Multrikona implies that you may also load the sign. Okay. okay. Like this I can show you differences between all the signs in the chart so that they're okay. not all the same. Gemini and Virgo are not the same. Taurus Libra are not the same. Not just because they are different in place from Aries but because the planets which represent them are also slightly different okay okay now so either mars or ketu is his seventh lord all right okay as it is he has two seventh lords so there's a chance that he will have two options to marry uh huh just that tells me that he will have two options because mm -hmm. two people are coming into his life the seventh oh, lord okay. is the seventh lord is the spouse right uh huh huh yes now one of these is mars and mars is joined rahu and venus okay rahu now rahu with mars is a problem we call it kuja stambhana this is okay. what is taught in many of the traditions they say it's kuja stambhana kuja means mars stambhana yeah. means to be frozen as if rahu has eclipsed him okay okay yeah so that means spouse will be arrested or frozen that means under house arrest under restriction oh. will not be able to go anywhere will not be able to go move anywhere okay now if he has to marry this person he has to release her from prison right literally okay correct from prison mm -hmm. correct so he has to release spouse to get married so how did he marry his first spouse rukmini oh okay he had to elope with her yes fantastic and he had to elope with his father in law and brother in law chasing him Okay? Rukmini. So this is how he married Rukmini. Okay. Okay. All right. Similarly, he also eloped with Satyabhama, his second spouse. Uh-huh. Right? He had to do so with both spouses. Okay. Now take this. Finally, he married 16,000. Some people say 100, some people say 200. Yeah, 16, it's 100,000 widowers. See Rahu joined? Oh, okay. 
Raho indicates somebody who is a widow, who is whose spouse is that who has passed away or divorced. Could also be divorced. Okay. Yes. Now, and she and he had to do, do this to save them from slavery. Okay. Again, he's saving somebody, right? They're all frozen. They're restricted. They're under some type of uh, quarantine or some type of uh, restriction. And he has yes. to keep saving them. Even Satya Bama, he had to elope with. He eloped with Rupin. He eloped with Satya Bama. Finally, he had to release these 16,000 women from slavery. Okay? Yes. All right? It was slavery they were under. He had to release them from that. So every time he is marrying, he's marrying to release people from slavery. Okay, or some correct. Of sorts. So this will happen every time he goes to marry? Every time. These are, oh, the, okay. these are the situation in which the spouse is in when he goes to see them. Okay. Remember we talked about what is happening uh -huh. to the spouse, seventh lord. And we uh -huh. said disease even six day twelve. But this is not six day twelve. This is third house. Correct. Correct. Third house is the house of where you are going to battle. You're preparing to go to battle. You're picking yes. up your weapons. So yes. when he goes to find his spouse, he has to get, undergo a challenge. And yeah, then and when he married another woman, uh, I forgot her name, it was Nagna Jiti or somebody, he had to subdue the eight, seven bulls and he expanded in himself. So that story is also there in Bhagavad Gita. Again, he's always saving women, right? Always <laughs> saving them from some bondage they're under. All right? Okay. Now, Venus has joined two malefics. So we said this is, now this is two things are happening at the same time. One okay. thing is, what is going on to the spouse, seventh lord? Okay. And then Venus. How is his personal fortune and happiness with regards to relationships? Okay. Okay. They are somehow connected here. So yes. Venus is joined to malefics. So if we had to read Parashara straight, we would say there's a risk that two of his spouses could die. Oh. Two malefics, right? So two times you will have a setback in relationships. So now take okay. this one step further. The amount of malefics you have afflicting Venus okay. is, the, is the amount of times you will have sorrow in relationships. Okay. That's how many setbacks or heartaches you can have in life. Okay. Yes. All right. And these could be for different reasons. Okay. But in the end, it in, implies that you, you are like Shukra in matters of relationships. Your, how you are enjoying relationships you got afflicted twice, basically heartbroken oh. twice. Okay. Okay. So even if it is Mars or Rahu or Saturn, it is the same heartbreak. Eventually it's heartbreak, right? Yes. According to me, there are very few Grahas which are good for Venus. I'll show you that also in a few. Okay. okay? Derive it. So Venus joined two Malefics shows danger to spouse, but exchange with moon protects. So this Venus moon exchange means okay. Venus keeps coming out of this affliction. Okay. Otherwise, they would have suffered also. His spouses would have suffered. They would not have endured. The oh, endurance, okay. the saving grace is Venus is badly placed. How does Venus come out of his bad placement? Moon and Venus are exchanging signs here. So it's as if Moon keeps pulling out Venus. Okay. It's like saving Venus. All right? So another principle in this exchanges can take a planet out of its predicament all right oh okay so so also one of his spouses satya bama was a warrior she was a warrior she fought alongside krishna yes yes alongside in fact there was one battle where they were taunting her and she told krishna you step aside you hold the reins of the chariot i will fight and she defeated everyone okay i will fight so you see that is that power of that shukra no matter how many battles it's involved in, it keeps being pulled out of this, this affliction of Mars and Rahul. Keeps being saved, if you will. Okay. okay. So that also gives us better insight into that he actually was able to save his spouses initially to get married. And secondly, that when his spouses are in trouble, they also get saved. Oh, okay. Okay. So not only before he marries them, but also after. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. And one thing I wanted to ask you here, if you take Mars as a seven lord, so in cancer, you could consider it to be in debility. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So that's the extent of which the danger is there to spouse, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. The exchange is changing everything. Okay. Okay. The exchanges are very peculiar. They can change everything in the chart. We thought this Mars is acting badly. 
the exchange will pull out Mars also. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. These exchanges never look, literally what's happening is this. All these planets are changing signs. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're going to Taurus instead. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Let's try another slide. I think I have some, something more here. Yes. So we started with getting the basics and then we opened up Krishna's chart and we started understanding Krishna a bit better. Because we need to understand his life. If we don't understand his life, then how are we really learning Jyotish? So in our tradition, we are taught the charts of Sri Ram and Sri Krishna. And also our Param Guru Achyutananda. We're given those three charts and we're told, okay, every time you learn something, apply it on their chart. Okay. If, it, if, it, if, it, if you can understand it from their chart, then it'll be easier for you to learn in other charts. Is, their lives are very well depicted. They're quite detailed. Yes. So when we read their lives, we can also apply the Jyotish and say, oh, this is how it works. This is how the Jyotish works. So when we say you go through event examples to you know, test your knowledge and principles, this is how actually we do it in the tradition. Okay. From the okay. beginning, we're learning like this. The beauty of this is also that you're looking at a spiritual chart. So you, your mind is developing a, a spiritual understanding of the principles involved. Okay. Because if you can look at God in that way, then you can understand people's lives in that way. If I see that Krishna had so many spouses, maybe I won't complain if somebody is going through multiple relationships. Okay. Then I won't be such so judgmental, right? Yes. I understand. Look, if Krishna could have so many spouses, maybe if somebody is having a bit of trouble in their married life and wants to marry again, I won't hold it against them. Right? Correct. Yes. Then I have to understand what is going on. Even Shri Krishna had to go through this. So what about somebody else? Okay? Yes. Now, Venus's agenda. See, first we talk just about the whole concept of reading a chart from the perspective of relationships. That's what we did first. Yes. So now we're going to try and understand only Venus. Now we're going to focus only on Venus, which we touched very, very gently when we talked about Krishna's chart and just looked at Venus and its conjunctions. But we're going to do proper Jyotish. We're not just going to sit here and look at only Venus, right? So we're going to understand Venus's entire agenda. So for this, I have to include some principle that Maharishi Jaimini speaks of. He speaks of that the achadana or hidden desire, the achadana. What is the hidden desire of Venus? Okay. That is the fifth house. His okay. hidden desire is fifth house. So whilst we're reading him to see relationships, really he is not interested in relationships. Wow. Venus wants fifth house, which is babies. Okay. He wants to make babies. His prime motive for uniting people is to populate the planet. Okay. Okay. And then we learn some important truth, which every woman understands. Maybe not all men. Okay. Venus indicates the desire to procreate. This is not the same as love, yet it brings people together. What does that mean? That initial excitement you have about meeting somebody, you get so infatuated with their appearance, their behavior, their, sometimes their smells for some people, all right, their way they speak. But you're, and everything they say, you forgive. <laughs> yes. That is, that is uh, peculiar. How, how can you do that? That doesn't make yeah. sense. And then we call it love. It's not wow. exactly love. Okay? Wow. It is Venus which has opened up the gateway in your brain which is starting to look at somebody as a potential partner. Mm -hmm. It could be life partner, but it's a potential partner. Everybody mm -hmm. goes through this. Okay. Imagine if you met somebody and you said, mm, yeah, they have nice hair. Yes. And they speak nicely. They have a good job, good finances. And uh, because of that, and they're a good family, I will marry. Mm -hmm. You know, but you might as well also marry somebody else if they had the same criteria. In fact, you could be sitting and measuring, no, this person has more money, forget you, I found somebody else. This will be even more money, I forget you, I found somebody else. You could keep going uh, with that. All uh, right? Uh, uh, uh. Where's the excitement? You're just looking at numbers and statistics, right? 
Yes, yes. Where yes. is that bond where you look at somebody and say, my goodness, this person I would love to spend the rest of my life with. I don't care about their family, their money, their career, nothing. I don't care. All right? Yes. All right? Now, that is Venus making you attached to somebody. Oh, okay. After some time, your reasoning begins to show up. Your reasoning oh, yes. power shows up. Usually after one year of marriage. Okay? Mm. And then you decide after that, do you still want to be married? <laughs> after that you decide. Because after that one year, you have started to become normal. Okay. okay? Before that, you are not normal. Venus okay. has released a chemical in your brain. And okay. you are not normal. We call this the power of Vashikaran. Okay. All right? Have you heard of Vashikaran? Some people yes. call it a black magic art. Actually, yes. it's the art of attracting people. Oh, okay. And if this attraction happens, then you get extremely attached to somebody. Okay. Yes. But it only lasts for a year. Okay. Only one year. Even those who perform this as a mantric art, it only lasts for one year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even you can do Vashikuta, Vaishakuta, to match people together so that they will be infatuated with each other in the charts. You could make two people infatuated with each other if they match okay. properly. All right? Okay. Some people do this deliberately because otherwise you might have one person who said, I am going to renounce and go to the mountains. And you see in their chart, they go to the mountains, there will be a woman waiting there for him. <laughs> you will say, this is not working. He is not going to, you know, make a good decision in life. So then you can make matchings which are based on this. To then, the, then that guy suddenly says, oh my God, forget my ideas about the mountains. She must be there. All right? And then after one year, then the guy realizes, what have I done? <laughs> It'll last for that long. Okay? Is this some specific time, only one year, or is it just a metaphorical time? Or no, no. Is it... it is a specific time. Okay. Because after the sun has made one such transit, one whole Transit. Oh. Then your moha ends. Oh. Okay. This also means if you have a weak sun in your chart, like Sankranti Dosha, you are highly susceptible towards this, towards others. You are very, a person who gets very easily infatuated. All right? Okay. You notice that. If people have Sankranti Dosha and they find themselves going in and out of relationships once a, for one year at a time, it's about time they, you know, call me and get a certain mantra. <laughs> because they're actually not falling in love per se. They're just getting infatuated for long periods of time. Okay. Yes. This is a problem. This can really cause issues in relationships. Now, okay. people stay together because of Jupiter, the governor of the Akash Tattva. Akash is what keeps people together. It's the sticky glue in this universe. It even keeps our body together. What to talk about the earth itself. All right? Okay. Yes. This, this Jupiter enables us to love regardless of physical intimacy. Oh. Venus is only interested in the physical part. And it is a beautiful part. Because if Venus gets his or her way, Venus will produce beautiful babies. Okay. So there is a point to this. Venus is bringing people together to make those babies, and those babies will be lovely. Okay? Okay. When people have come together for love marriages, you will notice their babies are really lovely. Their kids are very beautiful. They grow up to be very beautiful. If there's no love in the match, it affects the baby's appearance and their physical disposition, even their character. Okay. This is the contention against certain types of love marriages. Uh, sorry, arranged marriages. My mistake. All okay. right. Arranged marriages, if they do not have the Venus part if involved, will be will affect the children negatively. Okay. Right? That is why we tell people: no matter what you do for matching people together for marriage, look at the person's picture. Look at them. If you like the picture, you have completed the first part of matching. Okay. Next step, you can do the charts. That's the minimum. Minimum. Even better, meet the person, figure out if you actually like them. If you're not attracted to them, if you're not, if you if you don't feel like seeing that person's face every day when you wake up, it's going to affect your kids' lives. All okay. right. 
even their body, even their appearance will be affected by this. All right? Okay. All right. So, now, having said that, unless Jupiter supports a relationship born of Venus, Venus may not survive. There's some people who have kids together. After one year of, of being together, they realize what happened. They cannot live with this person. Many divorces happen just after having kids. Okay. Okay. Yes. Women understand this earlier than men, especially after children enter their lives. So okay. Venus is all about this part. Venus is water, only water. Uh -huh. Water is not enough to keep people together. You need Jupiter, the vacuum. Okay. Let's do some more Venus, reading Venus. The past is the ninth house from Venus. The future is the fifth house from Venus.